Hello, big news from our friends over at DistroKid. They now have an app. This app works on iOS and Android, of course. And it's available in the Apple Store and Google Play Stores and all the stores where you buy apps. Go check it out. It's got a lot of cool features. You can upload new releases. You can get notified when you've earned royalties. Awesome. You can withdraw from the app via push notifications. A little dangerous for me, but rad. Anyways, go check it out. It's all at distrokid.com slash app. And don't forget, you can still get 30% off your DistroKid account by going to distrokid.com slash VIP slash tour stories. Have a great one. Hello, everyone. Isotope's RX-11 has hit the streets. RX is the industry trailblazer for audio repair and enhancement. Powered by machine learning technology, RX's comprehensive suite of tools tackles everything from common audio problems to the trickiest of sonic rescues for music, audio post-production, podcast production, and content creation. Go to isotope.com and receive your 10% discount on all their software using code FRET10. That's F-R-E-T-1-0. All at I-Z-O-T-O-P-E dot com. Hey everyone, fantastic news. Ruinous Media welcomes our newest podcasters, Bothering the Band. Bothering the Band is a fun, unique podcast in which our homies Ryan and Abby ask their favorite famous musicians super silly, thought-provoking questions to see what really makes them tick. They don't care about their struggles or inspiration or process. They'd rather find out what they ate for breakfast, if they've ever seen a ghost, or how they put their shoes on, if they even wear shoes. Plus, many more hilarious and insightful inquisitions. They've gotten to talk to blue-collar punk bands from Germany, Grammy-nominated folk bands, rising reggae superstars, and even a Cold War kid or two. Check out Bothering the Band wherever you get your podcasts. And a warm welcome to Ryan and Abby and Bothering the Band. Check it out. Hi, Dave. Hi, Jeff. What's happening? Just hanging out. Um, trying to keep those cougars off the lawn. I know. Poor Chad. Chad's cougars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know. I have a... Well, I have two dogs. The one would be a really... She's really small. That would be quick. That would be a quick meal. But the big <laughs> one... Man, that would be... That would be more sad because that would be a fight and then the dog would lose. It's a, we, we have, we have a small dog as well. It was a, a COVID purchase Mm -hmm. for our kid, you know, when, when a lot of people are doing that thing. Uh, and she's allergic. So we needed to find a hypoallergenic dog, huge wait list for months and months. And then, uh, the wife got an alert saying one was available and we clicked and it was for a, a miniature teacup Yorkie. Oh, cute. And we like terriers, but we were like, are we going to be little dog people? We aren't too sure about that. Yeah. And um, turns out it's the greatest dog in the world. We, her name is Boba. Just like a regular dog, but tiny. Yeah. And, you know. But talking about quick snacks. I mean, we're out here in the parks looking for birds, raccoons. Yeah. Yeah, my dog, uh, the, the small one is a miniature Dachshund, as the Germans pronounce it, wiener dog, and she's a real, she's a real hound. She's a real hunter. Lovely. I was in this band called Scared of Chaka. Really? And our first drummer, and this is in the 90s, Yeah. had... You remember back when we were kids and you didn't really purchase dogs for four digit yeah. prices. You, Supermarket. You, dog, they were in a box in yeah. front of the store. Exactly. Yeah. A dog happened. A dog occurred and then now there's a dog. He had this, uh, it was like a German Shepherd Rottweiler mix. Lovely, lovely dog, but real, real big, real wild. Came back from a practice once. 
and the dog had knocked over a big mason jar of honey onto <laughs> the, the yeah onto the tile floor of the kitchen and it shattered in a million pieces and the dog was just crunch 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 eating the whole thing up and we we're like oh that eating dog glass honey? lived the dog lived for another decade oh my gosh i swear to god i don't know i don't know what kind of hybrid vigor they pumped in the albuquerque water back then but these days joe no kids kids these days these dogs these days they can't eat glass like they used to glass honey would be a good name for like an electro clash band it when would. electro clash comes back which it could when, be and- it could be me and you <laughs> <laughs> Within a year, we could have a whole Electro Clash record called Glass Honey. And one of us can be Glass. Yeah. You know, stage is honey. A little sweeter. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it so much. Um, that's yeah, great. Yeah. That's great. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm getting ready to do a little work with my 1990s punk rock band, Scared of Chaka. Yeah, I know that. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Very excited obviously as i reached out to you i i love scared of chaka and i love this new tune and i also got a text i told gabriel kerberat today Mm. that i was gonna go see you this saturday which i'm going to go see nice and he lives in savannah is on tour and said oh man i was trying to go to that show but i have to work on saturday He was going to fly from wherever he is to go to that show. Uh, so it's uh, that's so cool, and I love that. We, we've had um, the first – there's two shows, right? So the yeah. first one is on Friday with our friends Dillinger 4, who are also old 90s punkers that we used to play with yeah. back in the day. That show sold out fast, so we were asked mostly by our friends yeah. that – didn't get tickets to get a second show together. And so the second show is going to be a little, it's probably going to be funner. It's, it's a little more like, Yay. like homies only, but uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be cool. There's some people flying in. Um, other people I, I heard from like LA, it's nothing nerve wracking about that. No, don't worry about it. Also Rick Rubin. <laughs> yeah. Also, I, I don't know why these are fast songs, Joe. I don't know why I wrote, so oh, fast. I'm so and, glad. I'm so and glad. I'm, and, and I'm and I'm out of breath. Yay. I might have to jump. Um I'm looking forward to this so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's crazy. And I, I don't know why like the song you're about to play, uh I started writing it traditionally very fast. Uh-huh. It's just going to be like a bup, 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 bup. that's a scared of shaka beat and then we were working it out me and um our drummer Ron and it just felt better cutting the time in half yeah and then it felt better it was more impactful and then i was like why did i forgot why i wrote fast and then yeah. a friend of mine here who was from albuquerque said well it's because if you didn't play fast in albuquerque in the 90s you would get your your ass kicked. <laughs> that's great Punishment. Uh, um it's sad but a great um <laughs> um it's been fun though. It's been really fun revisiting these songs. Yeah. And I want to um, hear about the, the revitalization of Scared of Chaka. But first, can you give us a brief history? I mean, I know it, but I don't know yeah. if everyone knows it. So, you know, I started the band when I was 22, 1993. Uh, there was a first version that survived for like a year and a half. We had a full length and um, a couple of singles. Uh, you know, good band, good songs, but we changed when we got a new drummer and we kind of went a, not a different direction, but I don't know. I think the first version was a lot more like the Dickies or Buzzcocks, you know? A little pop beer, I guess. I don't know if that's British. Something. What do we call that? I, I know what it, you, I know exactly what you it's mean. It's like more Brit power pop? poppy. It's more power. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, a, lot, a little more staccato, a little bit more like ping pong with the melodies. Like, you know, very fun. But uh, the final version started mid late 90s. And that was when, you know, a, a different resurgence was sort of happening. Um, Albuquerque had like a really good set of bands like The Drags, uh, Word Salad, oh, right. yeah. Flake Music. 
uh, Scared and Chaka, a lot, a lot of bands that were just doing their best, their level best to do, uh, you know, follow whatever genre <laughs> as best they can. So what I mean is like there was an estrus band. Yeah. That was pretty good. The drags. Yeah. We had a couple of sub hop, uh, like singles club bands, you know, there was a couple of hardcore bands and flake music. We're definitely doing like the built to spill thing. Um, and we were, we were touring a lot. We were doing a whole lot of like just traveling and flying around and stuff and did Japan and Europe and it was fun. Um, so it's a show and tell moment of the, of the interview. I wanted to bring this up. I posted oh, this earlier. That? So in <sighs> the mid nineties. Oh, is that? Oh, I know what that is. Oh my gosh. And then I'll do this. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to hear what you called I, it. I want to say, right. I mean, I'm assuming Blackheart messed with, but like I had, I want to say maybe Los Crudos. Yeah. From Chicago. Well, real quick, if you're only listening, Dave just held up a black device with a keypad on it. If you, It's about as big as a, a Blackberry, let's say. And it has a circular thing on the back that f- looks like it fits into, and I know a, it fits into a phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A receiver, rotary telephone. A rotary telephone receiver. So um, someone paper. told me once the legit like purpose of this invention you get it at radio shack yeah and it was for you know senior citizens that <laughs> very specific thing uh, senior citizens that didn't have digital phones and were trying to order something from tv and you need to have like like the, yeah the, you know yeah so this replicates it's a it's a keypad <laughs> it's i mean a very very weird device but like what you do is you these were kind of contraband and you'd, you'd buy these from another person on tour and they had just been brought to their friend with a soldering iron and they moved this there, whatever. Long story short, this replicates the sound of a quarter. <laughs> I can't going, believe you still have that thing. going into a, a payphone, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know exactly what this is. Yeah. We called it the demon dialer. Yeah. Is that what you call them? Yeah. Oh, well, uh, yeah. We shortened it to the dialer. And yeah. then everyone was like, don't drop the dialer. Yeah. Oh, my God. Who has the, like, what did we lose the dialer? Yeah. And you'd have to, like, you know, that's how we advanced shows. And that's how we booked half, like, like we're done with it. We're, we're in Memphis. Let's get back and we'll get on right. the dialer. And you have to, like, find a payphone. You look at the phone number contact from the Maximum Rock and Roll magazine. You, you dial it and it says, please uh, insert three dollars and you go beep, 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 beep. you hold that thing up to the mouthpiece and push the buttons this is real now simulating a coin drop so <laughs> strange so fun yeah 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 so i've, I've just been kind of going through uh you know relics relics and uh memories but see nowadays you you t- can book a whole uh career on your on your telephone you can in your pocket in your pocket. You can maybe even accidentally do it if you leave your screen <laughs> yeah. open. You could book your tour uh-huh. accidentally. Yeah, you, you could uh, butt dial an entire tour. You could butt dial a, a, a P&L, a cost sheet, and then yeah. maybe accidentally make a million and then lose two. Right. And you didn't even know. And, and then you're just back from the bathroom. <laughs> um, okay, so. I'm so happy you know what that was. Did you stop? playing did has scared of chalk ever stopped yeah like uh i want to say in 1999 okay we sort of came to an abrupt halt in new york oh at brownies this is a band fight isn't it sort of okay all right i love old band <laughs> and fights and it's water under the bridge yeah so if it's you know it's it's a if it wasn't i wouldn't want to talk about it Exactly, exactly. So we had a big tour again with with Dolce Four, uh, interestingly enough. And it, it was a big tour through the States. And then we we're going to go to Europe and have a big festival tour. Um, we uh, we were working with a newish bass player because uh, our, our uh, regular one moved to L.A., didn't want to do that tour. So it was me and Ron. Mm hmm. 
and uh, this kid who had never left the state of uh, South Dakota, but he was a super fan and he looked cool and he jumped yeah. and he knew all our songs. That's as far as our vetting went. Um, and he was great. He still is great. Johnny, he's awesome. Ron and I were not at our, our uh, happiest or healthiest. Mm -hmm. And I think we were a little much. And uh, <laughs> it was, it was, it was a, you know, it was a, it was an adult dose. We, and we were, we, all, we were also like much older than this kid. So we go, we get to New York next day. We're supposed to get on a plane and he, he, you know, tells us like, unfortunately I love this, but I just, you know, I'm going to have to have to bow out. And um, Ron and I got a little emotional <laughs> with, mm -hmm. the, with each other and he ended up, uh, just driving the van back home and Ron I ended did. up run and From I ended New up, York. yeah. Yeah. And I ended up staying in, uh, Brooklyn with my, uh, then girlfriend, Nancy and kind of got very depressed. This is around the time I was starting to, to uh, mess with the shins with James as well. So I sort of had this like, well, at least I could do that kind of thing. And, but that took an, a, a number of years to get back into that. But uh, right. I'm, I'm kind of getting off topic. But yeah, so New York in 99, that's kind of when we sort of really stopped. Stop, stopped. And you moved in yeah. with your girlfriend, Nancy, and you guys shot heroin for a few years. Uh, did she stab you or did you stab her? I can't remember. You know, you know, um, it was one of those like looking at it from her her perspective must have been like very like oh this is a great exciting wow i, I love this i love this guy he's so cool he's exciting I, we never see each other we, we sometimes run into each other on tour there's mixtapes it's really yeah. neat and fun and and now he's here on my couch super sad <laughs> <laughs> oh, I and i was like hey but i'm here what's going on let's go let's 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 do this hold me while i sob <laughs> Let's party. <laughs> oh man. So that that like she she very uh gently uh put me in a van <laughs> that some friends of ours, uh the Eiler set touring with um the gossip and Slater Kenny, and they needed a roadie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it was actually our friend Linton was uh Nancy was like, just help Dave out, get him home. Yeah. Wow. Please. Yeah. So that's how I ended up in Albuquerque after that, and then up the coast and back and home to Seattle. Yeah. Where I've been. Man, that the Dave and Nancy is such a warmer story than the Sid and Nancy story. Well, she she uh excelled at, at her her craft and she's uh she's kicking butt. She's an L C D sound system. And yeah, yeah, we actually saw each other here in town like a month or two ago. She's doing fantastic. Cool. Yeah. Um okay, so you guys, it sounds like you and Ron took a break um, until when? What was the what was the uh, catalyst for this these new tunes? Yeah, I mean, like between then and now, we we uh, we actually did a, a little tour. I think we had like one record left officially on a contract. We did mm -hmm. that, but we didn't really have the have the the gumption to have a full tour to support it. So we had like a a little month in Italy. That was nice. Oh, wow. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, again, Pete from Slovenly, he's just a superstar. He helped us out greatly with that. And we, we got to see uh, Naples and Sicily and have some really good shows. Um, and then we were, again, this is supposed to be a really short, uneventful tour. And then we're on the road and 9-11 happens. Mm. And we were on our way to CMJ because that's September. Yeah. And... Um, we took a, a vote in the van, like, do we keep going or do we come back? And th we decided to keep going. And that was that was weird. We uh, because everyone else that was doing CMJ also like in our same boat. Yeah, we're just kind of milling around. So we're like, oh, look, there's at the drive in at the Barnes and Noble like us. Yeah, like, there's just a right. bunch of people just kind of trying to, you know, give each other tips on last minute pickup shows and so that was like officially the final, final actual like okay. road work we did around 9-11. No, nothing to do with 9-11, but yeah, yeah, that was around that. And yeah. then we did like, you know, one reunion show 
a few years later and then one smallish reading show a few years after that. But it's been, yeah, it's been nothing for quite a while. And now you've got this whole new record that's coming out on Slovingly. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it's will be out by the time people hear this. Yeah, yeah. Um, because we got we got the invitation from Dillinger Four to play the show, and this was a while ago. Yeah. And I asked Damien, "Do you want to play?" And it could be good. And he's like, "Ah, uh, I don't know about that. Uh, you know, nostalgia shit. I don't want to do that that moldy old stuff." He's like, "Call me when you." have some new songs ha 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 and uh, so i wrote a couple of new songs and i i booked a student i i largely was just like well i guess we do this i told pete and he wanted to press it and it just kind of started happening okay so that was it that was the inspiration there it's been pretty organic yeah uh i love this song i'm about to play baited breath it's invigorating and it gets me excited and it i'm fucking psyched it's such a good song let's play thanks, it joe thanks have it um will you play that twice on saturday when i come see you uh yeah yeah sure sure Thanks. um thank you yeah it, i'm glad you like it there's a lot of really interesting kind of guitar leady things in there that i like especially at the end that takes us out so cool i i the doing that was really fun we did it with uh ryan leva and mm-hmm. um we had like a just the skeleton of the song ron on drums our our original drummer and I think it just kicks butt. I think the drums are amazing. Yeah, they and are. he really helped, you know, guide the song here and there. And, but yeah, for guitars, I kind of, I traditionally have to edit out 
the majority of my guitar ideas at any given moment. Why? With ever with every project, it's just a lot. It's just too much. Um, I get a lot of uh, you know melodic cacophony. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, you got a and, lot and of then, ideas. Yeah, it, it, so it, it's one of those things that like I love being in the studio. I love uh, mixing, and I love learning that you know instead of bringing something up, you take that down. Yeah, has totally. been. You know what I mean? That's, yeah, yeah. that's been a large thing. I know you know about that. Uh, Phil Eck was really um, instrumental in making me remember that as well. Uh, uh, so it's one of those things where you have like like 17 guitar tracks and then you have to like start. If you take like half of them away, the song turns into something else, that kind of a thing, you know, yeah. and then that affects the bass line. Sure. And then that might have to make the, the, the vocals change so that you play the original scratch demo and it's completely different right yeah which yeah. is fun i love that you know i'm and that, now that you kind of put that in my mind i always kind of uncom you have this is a compliment but i'm really saying this for this conversation you have a real command of your instrument guitar and that coupled with ideas a lot of ideas you are like, let me try this guy in the studio, which is the, the best when you're writing. When you're tracking, it's like, if someone has a lot of ideas, you don't use them all, but if you have them and then you can at least illustrate them and put them on, that's the best. Yeah, it's, it's uh, thank you. It's, it's been interesting. Um, you know, I, I guess the first time I really recorded in a sort of legitimate studio was with Scarechaka in the mid nineties. And I didn't really have a lot of mentorship or, you know, a blueprint to follow. I just kind of had all these song ideas. You yeah. Know? And honestly, a lot of our early recordings are just guitar, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I really, I'm I, dying to go back and I, I wish I could remix everything and bring, yeah. you know, bring everything else up. But then again, I, I remember I have all these favorite records from other artists and I've seen interviews where they're like, that's the worst record. I want to go back. And yeah. you know what I mean? And, and there's something to be said about loving the flaw. There's something to be said about right. embracing the error and embrace it. I, I hate things that are too polished to in, in any yeah. level, right. like from finishing to execution to, to everything. It's yeah. just you need to have some bumps. Yeah, I agree. You know, and did you play bass on the record? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played I, I did the bass. Um and I don't, I've never got bass lessons. I've never, you know, but in my head, I know how a bass part is supposed to sound. Sure. So, yeah. So the majority of Scare Chaga stuff, I've, I've done all, all the bass. Who's playing bass now? Oh, that's Damien. All right. Damn it. Um, well, again, I can't say it enough. I'm psyched to see the show. Um, what else have you been doing? I've been, um, cooking food yeah. and serving it at different brew pubs. <laughs> yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a, uh, a papa business, mostly yeah. uh new Mexican food, like tacos and burritos and touring around the States. If you're a band from New Mexico, you, you miss the food and coming here to Seattle, uh, you know, a couple of decades ago, you, you, there's not a lot of it here. So you yeah. just kind of, teach yourself how to do it and you have other friends from new mexico that learn how to do it as well and then yeah around covid i made a meal and i brought it to my friend drew when it was a uh, quarantine no one could leave their house and he put it on social media and another friend of ours asked me to do it and i did it for them and then yeah a third time to fourth time and and then my wife was like maybe you should charge money for this and yeah and i just it just kind of kind of grew from there but yeah cocina Cucina Barelas. It's you, a nice, nice you, thing. During the pandemic, I, I bought some meat for my neighbors from you. Are you still doing that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it I'm, was uh, packaged, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, clear. it wasn't just loose. <laughs> but it was, it was, that was, <laughs> is that part of your business still? Yeah, uh, I, I still, I, and that's the, you're referring to the carne arrivada. Yeah. The slow roasted shredded pork that's yeah. marinated in a, Red sauce. I yeah, I still do that. Uh, the price points are a little, little different, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, I I, lo I love 
hooking that up. I, I did have a job once as a kid, you know, when you're, when you're scared, when you're in bands back then, you can't have a real job. No you way. need to have jobs with people that don't mind you leaving after a yeah. couple of months and then coming back whenever. Yeah. So in Albuquerque, I had, I was an ice cream man. So really? yeah, I was, I was an ice cream man in a, in a van and that was very fun. An, uh, ice, cream, I was also, an ice cream young man. I, I was a, a young man. Yeah. I was a young man. And I, um, I learned that ice cream vans are very, uh, lucrative. They're also, uh, they hire a specific demographic. There's a lot of, um, unhirables. There's a lot of people that are sort of out of the system. Maybe they're recently divorced. Maybe they're on their way to the Bahamas Uh and need to leave right away. (laughs) Um, but it's a cash business. Yeah. (laughs) I love this insight. It's a, you're, you're in a van and (laughs) half of it is welded out. So the wall is missing (laughs) and under your seat. And most people know this is a cardboard box full of cash money and you can't go that fast. And you're announcing your presence everywhere with lights and noise. Yeah. Um, and the majority of, the, the places you make the most money aren't the most like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> on my, on, on my first day of the job, I, I, uh, I was taking over a person's route mm-hmm. and that's another thing you learn. It's very territorial. You can't, wow. you know, just it's, it's a whole thing, but this guy, he showed me, okay, so we're going to go over here at 1141 and we pulled into a cul-de-sac. And then at 11.45, he turns the lights on and then all the doors open and these men come out and it's a, it's a halfway house, like for recently, you know, Mm. released convicts. Sure. And they're used to having food brought to them same time every day. So, but you have to be there right at 11.41 same time for, you know, and then that's like an easy 70 bucks or whatever. And then we turned down, you're going up central then you have to make a right on want to bow i think <laughs> there's a, it's a neighborhood called the war zone okay um yeah. jesse sandoval mm-hmm. who drummed in flake music and, and shins uh i think he lived there for some time but uh when he was a lot younger yeah but it's you know if you're not f- yeah if you're not from there you don't go there yeah and we're driving in and it's middle of the day and uh, we pull into the, this, the end of the street, and then all the kids come out. They, they're mobbing the van, but no one's buying any ice cream. And we're just like, and then a door opens, and these two very large men come out, and they look both ways. And then a smaller gentleman comes out with a, without a shirt, and he has cracker on his stomach. Whoa. He's a... a they're 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 men of color and he's not yeah and they and they kind of walk he he walks through the crowd and then he gets to the van and he lays down like four hundred dollars and then it's just a free-for-all and then all the kids grab whatever they want and then we're just kind of hanging out and he's like so this is dave he's taking over the route and i was like Hi, buddy. Hello, crack. <laughs> Hi, cracker. Or what, Mister uh, Cracker? I mean, <laughs> or <should> Mister. I... <laughs> and and he he asks, uh, yes, this is going to be a, a good a good route for you. Do you do you, uh, do you have a piece? And I was like, yeah. Uh, what's that? He's like, you know, are you holding. You have a piece. And I'm like, it's day one, day one. Oh, and oh and I God. said, I said no. Nah. And he's like, well, come back tonight. No. And uh, and and I. I didn't. Yeah. I ended up not putting that much high stakes yeah. <laughs> into my ice cream job. I, I ended up making a lot of a lot of fast, weird money on that job. But you know, it wasn't weird, but right, right. sort of weird. Yeah. You can sell anything. People oh, right. like, you know, like fireworks, beer for construction workers, anything oh else. Oh my gosh. Sometimes you'd come in and one of the guys has had his friend give him a black eye so that he can say he got mugged and then he keeps all the money. But then when that happens, the people that run the shop have to take you in another room. There's a whole thing. It's, it gets real complicated. There's a lot of angles, but, um, this is, I like also, the, you know, yeah, you got to get with Tarantino. Apparently he's done making movies or something, but this is, he's not going to be able to resist this. Mr. Frosty. 
Yeah. That was the name of the company, Mr. Jeez. Frosty. Yeah, a lot of Choco Tacos. Oh, man, do you know Choco Tacos are no longer? Why is that? It's like it's the bullshit. best. Bullshit. And it's the I same thing as a drumstick. It's just a different shape. And exactly. They, and they taste better. For some reason, they're discontinued. I got the, maybe the last box at my local store here in West Seattle. Um, whenever Damn. that happened, two years ago or something. Man, it sucks, though. Yeah, it's my favorite. It's yeah. the best. Um, I also, we're on this tangent because you said something about meat I used to sell. Oh, I, yeah. I had one day where I sold meat. Yeah. I didn't know it was going to be meat, but you go to the warehouse and then like they're, they're talking about selling meat. And then you look at it and it's uh, freeze dried steaks. Yeah. Oh, is that when <laughs> you they, like knock on people's door and go like, hey, I, I am uh, delivering steaks for the Johnsons up the street, but I got extra. Do you've had this happen to you? Yeah. Just happened to me um, two weeks ago at my house. Wow. Yeah. Uh, we would do a thing where, hey, we're delivering to uh, Scalo was the fancy restaurant in Albuquerque, and yeah. they ordered too much uh, filet mignon. And, exactly. Yeah. But for you know, tell you what, and, you know, and uh, I, again with a, a guy that was showing me the ropes, I didn't do that at all. But <laughs> a month or two later, there was like a breaking news, and then I saw him. He was like, "No comment," and he slams the door. And apparently someone blew the whistle on the company because the meat was three years old. Wow. And he took a, a ham-fisted hit out on the whistleblower and that and it went uh, it went belly up and uh, the this... guy blew the whistle on him. Yeah. And then he was dragged out in handcuffs from his... Jeez. And then you heard a, a Mr. Frosty ice cream truck in the background. <laughs> Full uh... circle. Did, um, the only thing I did, I had, I, did I do it? The speakers thing that was a selling speakers was the exact same okay. Okay. thing. And I went to, when I lived at first moved to Portland, I went to a job interview in yeah. uh, a warehouse and it was like, <laughs> you have these speakers and you drive around and say, Hey, yeah. I, uh, I was <laughs> delivering speakers to wherever and they over ordered. Uh, these are high end speakers. Wow. Can I sell them to you right now? These are high end, by the yeah. way. Yeah. And I did, let's see, I did it. I went up the street with a guy and did get the ropes. It was like a little bit uneventful, but I I got all the insight I needed. And it, that's all it was. It was just a scam. It's so. It's like, it feels like so much so effort for these people that that's organize it. that. I mean, like, I don't know what the what the takeaway would be for them. Um, but yeah, those were two weird jobs. I had. Oh, I, I, pro I served uh, summons as well. I was a process oh, server. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, these are just, you know, jobs you had to take in the nineties. If you're in a, if you're in a band, band as, yeah. you, as well, you know, yeah. Catering was my, one of my jobs. Nice. Yeah. That was a pretty drug fueled vocation also. Not, <laughs> not, not the entire industry that is not just me. Yeah. Tell uh, me about it. Um, man, it's good to see you. Good to see you too, buddy. I get to see you more. I'm going to see you very soon. Yeah. I'm going to bring all my friends to the show tomorrow, to the show tomorrow, Saturday clock wow. out lounge. Yikes. And, uh, they got good pizza there. I don't know if you know that. Stevie's sourdough. Oh, yeah, love it. Which just got a free shout out from me. Where's the Absolutely pizza, Stevie? Free. Yeah, we'll see, Stevie. Um, what about vinyl versions of the record? Yeah, vinyl versions are going to be available at the shows. Oh, great. Yeah, just the the singles, just the, the yeah. two song singles, and then um, mail order will be delivered a month after. Okay, so killer yeah early september but yeah come to the shows and that's where you can get your hands on the vinyl first how about some merch yeah we, we got t-shirts sweet um we got we got uh i think someone found a bunch of patches All i don't right. know if people do patches i never even did patches i never but, did you know, patches either people but people did a patch everyone people, did people patched people patched uh, like crazy like crazy we, we used to have koozies that was a fun yeah. one yeah did you ever have koozies? Uh, I did. I still, I think Cold War Kids still has koozies. Nice, nice. What's the what's the wackiest merch you've ever 
you've ever rocked in all of your years? Uh, good question. Great question. Um, let's. See. I mean, you know what big business did, right? No. So Cody and Jared would um go to their uh, catering table, catering table, whatever, and they'd assemble sandwiches. Oh. And then they'd sell the sandwiches at I, merch. I had no idea. No. I never heard that That's, story. That's weird. I mean, money's flying out the, the window. That yeah. you're you're, uh, you're losing money not selling and making sandwiches. Yeah, you're leaving money on the merch table, as they say. Exactly. And who wouldn't want a sandwich made with the hands of uh, Cody Willis? Right. Look at this. I'm holding okay. up a... Oh, that's a big pick. business pick, a Jerry nice. big business pick that I've had for a long time. Um, gosh, the weirdest. Um, me and John Atkins gave the audience maracas, ah. but I think we bought a lot of maracas to sell as well. Right. At, so it's kind of a like the ones that they sell at the the thing roadside attraction. The thing uh -huh. is that in New Mexico or Texas? Oh New yeah, the thing. The, the, the that's thing. uh yeah. that's Arizona. Arizona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what we sold. Like those gourd maracas. Maybe they were gourd. I don't even know. Um, I want to tell one story yeah, before we it. leave about touring with Donzer Four. They were relentless uh, with the pranks. Mm -hmm. Relentless, and they're uh, large men, like yeah. large Minnesota men. Yeah, you know, we're not. We're under. We're under six feet. Yeah. We're diminutive compared to these <laughs> large, cheese-soaked men. Yeah, and um, they but they were very uh, you know loving, but rough with their love. You yeah. know, like a lot of, you know, that early Murder City Devils chaos yeah. thing. But uh, had a tour where they were just, you know, one stop of the tour. They they were they were trying to dose everyone with X lax at mm -hmm. different points. Of the tour, they got me at a Denny's in a, or a morning, and then and, and I could feel it hit like bump. Oh, they got me! And I looked up, and they had big men, you know, yeah. sitting on on the left of me, blocking my escape, and they're just like slowly elbowing with the menu. And I just sat there with cramps and didn't do nothing. And they looked at each other; I could see, and they're like, "Well, I guess it didn't work." And you know, they had yeah. to get on the road. And then I hightailed it to the to the bathroom, but. On that tour, you you were you were mentioning um, roadside attractions. There was uh, we were going through Oklahoma on our or some or on our way to St. Louis. I don't know. We we're in the middle in the middle of of the country, and <laughs> we were caravanning with them. And it was such a long stretch. We just kind of started getting bored, and we stopped looking at their van, and and they mm -hmm. we just lost them. And we we were all yeah. going to the same venue anyway. It didn't really matter. Uh, we went to, we saw this, uh, big gas station, restaurant, um, fireworks, sure. everything. Yeah. Uh, and we pulled over there and we just kind of killed some time and we we're looking around. There's like a lot of, a lot of stuff. And we go back to the van and Ron's like, looks like the van's smoking. And I was like, uh, huh. And I had just received like, like an alarming, Look out for this region of the country. It's a little clansy. Yeah. Someone said that as a little, you know, to the Mexican guy. Yeah. And I was like, well, oh, shit. Yeah. So, so that was in the back of my head. We walk in. We, we, we see the, the van. It's a little smoky. Ron jogs up a little bit, opens the side, and it's just like, boom, smoke billowing out of our van. Billowing. And I was like, and I was like, oh no, oh no. And I'm looking around and, and I, I go up. He walks around the front of the van and he goes, those sons of bitches. And in our toothpaste that they had stolen because someone left a window slightly cracked, yeah. they just wrote D4 on our windshield and scared to shock us sucks. And it was, I think they, they got a bunch of, they told us later, they got a bunch of like smoke bombs earlier. Yeah. And then they parked waiting on us to come. And then they, they, 
sauce, <laughs> the sauce go in, and then they ran, let them, and then pss, stole our shit. Get, we had pizza, and they smeared pizza on our thing. Oh, they just Lord. wrecked wrecked our, our van and um, watched us from a distance, laughing, and then went to the to the show. And so we went back into the place and spent our last penny on as many Roman candles and bottle rockets mm-hmm. that we could hold. Got to the venue, got to the show. Like, hey, you guys got us. That was, that was really good. What can we say? You win. And then song one for Jones Four, we, we kind of triangulated. I had uh, Billy on stage left. Ron was by the drums. Uh, and then they kicked into the first song and we just lit them Roman. up. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> uh, just, and, and I don't know if you could do that these days. I don't know if, I mean, it, yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't that safe, but I think there's footage of it somewhere. And they loved it. They didn't even of you course. know they kept playing. Like, they they loved like, it. Yeah, they would have loved it. It was like it was like stagecraft to them. It was like, wow, this is like holy crap, you're making our show so much cooler. Thank you for blasting us in the chest with bottle rockets. Are you wary of any pranks? Um I am weary of one of us pulling our back tying our shoes and sneezing at the same time since we're all in our 50s yeah <laughs> or 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 a good prank a good uh yeah footsie nutsy you know yeah what's a footsie nutsy i like that. again with G- gabe kerbat uh <laughs> told me about footsie nutsy and it was basically on a on a at the drive-in <laughs> emergency devils tour and i think the goal was just uh everyone on the tour had to get a huge kick in the crotch as they rounded a corner the goal was to get the feet off the ground that's how Yikes. and then you and then you you yell i think you yell footsie nutsie yeah. uh C- cody knows more about it than i do but yeah footsie nutsie footsie nutsie i'm gonna try to bring that back it seems fun for people my age oh gabe I miss oh, that gabe. Guy. we love gabe yeah um okay man see you tomorrow I'm psyched. See you tomorrow. Thanks for uh, talking with me. It was great. Absolutely, buddy. Anytime. All right. Take care. You too. Bye.